osmotic pressure and osmotic flow is the last of our colligative properties. Colligative properties depend upon the concentration of the soil particles, but not its identity. The only part or identity that we use for our soil here is the Bantoff factor. If we dissolve a ionic compound, which we call an electrolyte, in solution or in water, it will disassociate from cations and anions. The Bantoff factor is how many of those ions are being created. So for sodium chloride, it's one sodium, one chloride, a total of two. For barium chloride, it's one barium, two chloride, a total of three. So those would be the Bantoff factors. For a non-electrolyte covalent compound, the Bantoff factor is one. It does not dissociate, so one particle as a solid becomes one particle as a solution. So for osmotic pressure or flow, this is when we have a semi-permeable membrane that will separate two solutions. It could be a cell wall, um, which allows water to pass easily, but controls the other particles in our plasma. We can make membranes of a wide variety of pore size on it. So we can make it so we can allow semi big things through. So we can use it for dialysis, keep blood cells from passing, but allow other salts and compounds to pass through. Or you can make it so that only water can pass through and not even a sodium ion or chloride ion could pass through. So we have two solutions separate. One is a uh, more pure solution uh, or pure water. The other one is a solution with something dissolved in it, salt or sugar. The natural flow, the osmotic flow, is from the more dilute side into the more concentrated side. If it was able to go to completion, it would keep flowing through the membrane until the two sides have the same concentration. Or when you have the pure water against the solution, the pressure that just stops this osmotic flow, we call that the osmotic pressure. And that's what this equation describes. If we're comparing two solutions, the one with the higher concentration, the higher osmotic pressure is called hypertonic. The one that is lower concentration, lower osmotic pressure is hypotonic. So the pure water would be hypotonic compared to any other solution. So the natural flows from the pure water into the solution, but if we increase this pressure, that pressure is greater than the osmotic pressure. We can reverse this flow. We'll actually have water flowing from the solution into the pure water. And this is called reverse osmosis. And we need pressure, and it takes energy to create pressure. So it costs more than just collecting rainwater. So the equation for osmotic pressure is pi equals IMRT. Pi is the osmotic pressure, term for osmotic pressure. I is the Vento factor, capital M is molarity, R is the gas constant. We want to use the same gas constant as the ideal gas law, 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And T is temperature in Kelvin. So our gas constant has units of atmospheres per, per pressure. Those are the units that we're going to get for our osmotic pressure. So I have a couple problems that we can do with this. So uh, let's start with this one here. So we um, term that the um, equivalent concentration of the ocean is equivalent to 0.54 molar molarity of sodium chloride. And we have a way to make, since the ocean is not just pure sodium chloride, that is this main component, but the other components we uh, make it equivalent to this in terms of their effect on the osmotic pressure. So the concentration of the ocean is equivalent to 0.54 molarity sodium chloride. What is the osmotic pressure at 25 Celsius? We know we're going to need Kelvin, so we convert Celsius into Kelvin, we've got 298 Kelvin. 
sodium chloride dissociates into one cation and one anion, so the Vantoff factor is two. So now we put our terms in, the two times the 0.54 molarity times the gas constant, 0 0.08206, hmm. times the temperature, 298 Kelvin, gives say osmotic pressure of 26 atmospheres. So we have to get above this to reverse that flow for reverse osmosis. And generally, we're going to have to be significantly above this to get uh, decent flow. But uh, we can make drinking water from ocean water. And right now, Orange County is building uh, the largest U.S. reverse osmosis plant to do just that. Okay, over here we have an aqueous barium fluoride solution. We have an osmotic pressure of 17 atmospheres at 25 Celsius. We're asked what the concentration of the barium fluoride is. We know we're going to need Kelvin, so 25 Celsius is converted into 298 Kelvin. We look at barium fluoride, we get one barium ion plus two chloride ions, add them up, and we have a Vantoff factor of three. So we're looking for the concentration molarity. Solve that as pi over IRT. We put in our values, 17 atmospheres for pi, three for the Vantoff factor, 0 0.08206 for our gas constant, and 298 for the temperature. And we get a molarity of 0.23 molarity for the barium chloride. The um, last question here, we're just asking which one will have a higher osmotic pressure. So we have uh, several solutions here, 0.25 molarity calcium bromide, 0.3 molarity calcium chloride, and uh, 0.5 molarity of methanol. So what will determine the highest osmotic pressure is going to be this term here. And that term itself is called osmolarity. So the highest the osmolarity at the same temperature will give us the highest osmotic pressure. So calcium bromide is going to form one calcium ion and two bromide ions, a total of three. Potassium chloride will form one potassium ion and two chlor uh, one chloride ion, giving a total of two. And methanol is a, a covalent compound. That means it's a non-electrolyte and our Vantoff factor is one. So we figure out what our IM is, it's the osmolarity. So for our calcium bromide, it comes out to be a 0.75. For our potassium chloride, it comes out to be a 0.6. And for our methanol, It's a 0.5. So we pick the biggest osmolarity, that's our calcium bromide, and this will be the highest osmotic pressure. <laughs>